Hello my little nerds, welcome back to my channel Psychology Network. This is the part 2 of Methods of Physiological Psychology. In the part 1, I covered few of the invasive methods. Those invasive methods which I covered in part 1 were the stereotaxic surgery, degeneration techniques and lesion techniques I would cover in this part. All the other three, which is the stereotaxic surgery, microelectrode studies and the chemical methods have been done in the part 1. The part two, which I would be doing is also on the invasive methods. The non-invasive methods would be done in the part three of this video series. So all these which you see here are already done in the part one. So go and check it out. I would even put the link for the part one in the description box below. So check that out before uh, going through the part two of this series. So let's start with the lesion methods. Now, basically, what is a lesion? lesion is a wound or an injury now lesion technique means the surgeon or the researcher which is who is doing the research is making this wound or injury in a animal under study uh, lesion techniques are not done on humans it's usually done on the animals now why would a researcher or a surgeon make a lesion which is a wound or an injury injury in an animal's brain the basic explanation is that the function of the brain can be inferred from the behaviors that the animal can no longer perform after the area has been damaged. Suppose the occipital lobe, the, the back part of the brain, if that is damaged by a, by a surgeon and after that the animal can no longer see. So that means that the occipital lobe has something related to the visual area. Now suppose the, the temporal lobe is lesioned and after that the animal is having short term memory problems. The animal cannot learn things, uh, cannot be conditioned on certain things. So that would mean that the association area, the short term memory can be attributed to the temporal lobe. So this is the simple rational for the lesion techniques. And uh, these were one of the first few techniques in the ancient times used to study the brain. Now, uh, there are few ways how these lesions are made. These are these uh, subtopics which are given to you. The UGC do not want you to learn each one of them in depth and want you to know A to Z of each one of them, but the basics you should know. And I have made these PPTs with all the information which you need. So you do not go hunting other books. So aspiration lesions. Now aspiration lesions is made in the areas of cortical tissue that is accessible to the eyes. The cortical tissues are accessible to the eyes of the surgeon or the researcher. Uh, who is uh, doing the surgery and the instruments of the surgeon uh, aspiration is frequently the method of choice usually researchers uh, use this type of method to do the lesions now how the uh, lesions are made these are not very important but i would just read it out to you for you to understand that the cortical tissue is drawn off by the suction through a fine tipped handheld glass pipette because the underlying white matter is slightly more resistant to suction than the cortical tissue itself, a skilled surgeon can delicately peel off the layers of the cortical tissue from the surface of the brain. Honestly, these are not some things you as a psychologist would need, but you as a psychologist must know all this, must at least know the basics of it. And what are the basics which you should know is that aspiration lesions are usually made in the area of cortical tissues. How it's done? It's not something which you have to keep in mind all the time. So the next one is radio frequency lesions. Now what are radio frequency lesions? Basically how the lesion is made. It is made by radio frequency current which is a high frequency current and it is they, they make a t target the target tissue in the brain where they want to make the lesion and the lesion here is done by the high frequency current. From the heat of the current the lesion is made. Lesion means uh, there is damage, so they destroy the tissue. There, there is damage to the tissue. Now, the knife cuts, it is simply like sectioning of the brain, cutting of the brain with a very 
uh, not the knife which we use in the kitchen, but something uh, a specialized knife which surgeons usually use, which is very small in nature, and they make knife cuts uh, in the brain with that instrument. And if the surgeon is very skilled, then they can produce the lesion without an extensive damage to the surrounding tissue. And that is what we need because when we are targeting the area and we want to make lesion in that particular area, but the surrounding areas also get lesioned or destroyed, then the the behaviors which are um, which would not be pr uh, produced by the animal anymore, the it would be very difficult to understand. It, is it because of the lesion we have made or the damaged tissues around the lesion. So that becomes very difficult. So lesions have to be made very carefully. Then these are reversible uh, lesions. Reversible lesions, the name can explain a lot that the lesions can be reversed. The, the animal can be okay after the lesions. Uh, that the, and Rever rever uh, reversible lesions are usually made by producing the cooling of the target uh, or by injecting the anesthetic. Example, lido uh, lidocaine is sometimes used. Uh, and one of the advantages of reversible lesions, which you must keep in mind, that in this case, the same subjects can be used in the controlled conditions and even in the clinical trials as well. So these were your four types of lesions. Before going into the next slide and explaining the next slide, if you haven't liked and subscribed the channel yet, please do so because the content is free and the knowledge is free. And this is all you need while studying about these topics. So you do not have to go hunting three, four books to study one topic. So let's get into the degenerative studies. Now, what are degenerative studies? These are completely opposite to your lesion studies. Now, the, in the lesion studies, we make a lesion and then the which the behavior is being stopped by the animal. We, we attribute that part of the brain to that behavior. The degenerative studies is completely the opposite. How? So suppose there is a person who has dementia. We know that the person has dementia. The person has some memory issues. Now, we do not know which part of the brain is affecting those memory issues because we can only know those by autopsy and the person hasn't died yet the person is alive but he has dementia which we are sure of so after he dies the autopsy is done on that person on the brain of that person and they see that some parts of the brain are degenerated so what they uh, what they say is that what they conclude is that the degenerated parts of the brain is the area for causing the dementia. If these areas will be degenerated, then dementia would be caused. This is the conclusion they get and this is done after autopsy. So suppose the person has dementia and after the death and after the death and then the autopsy is done, it is seen that the substantia nigra of the person is degenerated completely. So it would mean that dementia can be attributed to this part of the brain structure. Structure. So this was your degenerative studies. Then it would come, these are all your non-invasive study, uh, non-invasive techniques which I would be doing in the part three of these, this series. So in this, uh, you, we only learned the lesion and the degenerative techniques. So if you like the video, and if you like the video, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. And also, you might see there is a lot of information on the slides. Uh, this is because I want you to take the screenshot and keep it for yourself. Because when you reread it, because this information I've created from a different books, from a lot of different books, and this is a compact one. So you do not have to go and look through certain books you can just take a screenshot and read it twice thrice to so that it gets stained in your memory and you understand what you are studying that is why you would see all my paragraphs are loaded but that is just for you so thank you so much for listening i hope you understood something